Good afternoon and welcome to Chipola College. Thank you for serving on our advising council and for being here today. You were asked to serve because of your expertise in your career and in your workplace. We count on you here at Chipola to ensure that our programs are meeting the needs of business and industry and that our graduates are prepared to enter the workplace. Thank you for helping us recruit our students and for helping our graduates find good jobs. You are ambassadors for Chipola, so I'd like to report to you that Chipola College is proud of our accomplishments. Our enrollment is up, our graduation rates are up, and we are financially stable. And we are providing a substantial amount of financial support to many, many students in our communities. I want to close by saying that it's my privilege to serve as interim president of Chipola College and that we are very fortunate here to have a beautiful campus, to have qualified and committed staff and to have great students. We're also very fortunate to have friends and supporters like you who give your time, talent and energy to help Chipola and to help our students. We depend on your advice. You help us make our programs excellent and you help our students get ready and help us get our students ready to face the challenges of the workplace. So again, we say thank you and thank you for helping us do our work this afternoon. How you doing? Today is all about uh, Chipola College and workforce uh, cooperating with CareerSource, uh, both CareerSource Chipola and CareerSource Florida. I want to recognize our uh, economic partners as well. We have some people here, uh, our department name changed to workforce and economic development here a couple of years ago, and we're doing everything we can to be integrated with what's going on in, in this economy. Uh, we want to help grow and be a, a partner that you can count on. But I want a, a guy who uh, is uh, not on the charts, but he, I want Kevin Wall, if he would, to come up. I want Kevin to talk to us just a second about what hiring managers or hiring officers expect. He's a constituent of yours. Uh, so just before Richard comes, we're going to insert uh, Kevin here to kind of wake us up a little bit and uh, identify with what your needs are as a hiring manager. Thank you, Kevin. Good afternoon. My name is Kevin Wall. I'm Vice President of Anderson Columbia. We are family owner, family owned road building business. Most of y'all know Gene Strip and the works out of a Mariana office. I'm also the uh, president of the Asphalt Contractor Association. Represents most of the asphalt contractors across the state of Florida. And kind of what got this kind of started a little bit is Derwin, who we were on a trip going to a uh, Montgomery a couple of weeks ago and got talking about certifications and stuff and just the biggest thing I want to kind of reiterate to all y'all is the construction industry is huge and a lot of people don't realize how much money that we offer to pay people and how many jobs there are in the construction industry and anybody that drives up and down I-10 or anywhere in the state of Florida drives through a lane closure there is seven to ten people associated somehow with that lane closure that's got a certification that whether Anderson Columbia, C.W. Roberts, APAC, any contractor across the state of Florida has to send people to school. And I think that Chipola is trying to work and trying to get into this construction stuff. And there's several DOT people sitting back there, Jared Perdue, talking about the work program. You know, CEIs, all different people that's looking to get in this industry have to have these certifications. And I think it's on the cutting edge. We've talked about this in Miami. We've talked about it in Orlando. There's the vocational schools, and I look around. A lot of y'all grew up going to vocational schools or went to school, and they had vocational schools when I was young. Vocational schools, are they don't have them anymore. Nobody has hands-on real experience. And I mean, when I look at kids, you know, and if somebody can give me an 18, 20, 21-year-old man or woman gets out of school, goes to work with us, by the time they're 30, they can be making between 40 and 60, 70 thousand dollars a year. That's real money in the road building business. And it's not just me. I've got people from Tallahassee to Pensacola that are looking for good 
quality people to work in this industry. Yesterday, our president got elected. Some people might like him, some people might not. He just promised to put a trillion dollars across this country to rebuild our infrastructure. That is huge money. That is going to mean a huge amount of jobs. I mean, if you just look at it as far as industry, you start building roads. I mean, the first thing you can do, when you start building a road and infrastructure starts going in, you have housing, you have plumbing, you have electrical, you have all kind of stuff, but everything's got to start with a road. And, and there is a huge downturn in people all over this district that just stretches from Jefferson County to Pensacola. Everybody's looking for employees. I've got 10 site work contractors do the same thing I do, but way smaller. They looking for people every day. Nobody can find anybody that wants to work. And I think with the work of y'all here at Chipola and the Department of Transportation here in the third district, I think y'all could set the bar for the state of Florida, start off with some of these certifications. And I think it would be great because there's nobody in the state of Florida that's doing this all the way to Miami. Everybody's trying to figure out how to make it work. And I think there's an opportunity here to, to make it work and everybody try to realize that you know Jackson County is doing something that nobody else is doing. So hopefully we can all work together and then create, create better jobs for all of our kids that's getting out here and find them a better place to work. If you have any questions, feel free to call me or contact Derwin. I'll be around for a few minutes, but just, you know, please just reiterate, get kids motivated and get them out to work. That's, that's the backbone of our industry. Thank you all. Thank you, Kevin. Richard uh, Williams is uh, Executive Director of Career Source Chipola. He's going to introduce our speaker, but I just want to thank Richard for uh, probably being our best partner in the area. We work together closely on, uh, he's probably the voice of reason in the state of Florida, honestly, about rural issues. And uh, just really excited to have him here today. And uh, job fairs, career fairs, all these things we work on together. And I really appreciate Richard. Thank you for being here. That may have been the first time I've ever been called the voice of reason. Uh, those of you that know me well understand why uh, I said that. First off, I just want to say thank you very much for inviting us here today. I appreciate being here. Uh, I get the honor of introducing Chris Hart here in just a minute, but before I did, I wanted to say a few words to all of you. Um, look, I, I'm Executive Director of a Workforce Board here. I'm Executive Director of Opportunity Florida Regional Economic Development Group, and quite frankly, to tell the truth, I'm paid to be here. Okay? A lot of you in this room today, this is not your job in terms of what you get paid to do every day. This is something you're taking the time to try to make this community, this region, and this area better. I know none of you showed up here today just to have some chicken and sit around a table and talk. You really are here today because you want to make a difference in this community. And I'm proud to be here and be here with the folks at Chipola because I gotta tell you, they've been working hard to make a difference in this community. Their leadership came to us some time ago and asked us to help them meet with some of the local businesses. And as a result of that, you heard about two new programs that came up here at Chipola in the last year. They're a year old. And they came out as a result of the college coming up and saying, we want to do what this community needs. What is that? So you've got programs that are being developed here that, that you have a hand in that are making a difference in this community every day. You heard about the construction industry, and, and so I want to talk a little bit about just a second here. I want to give you a challenge before Chris comes up. When you go out to your advisory committee meetings today, we can spend a lot of time talking about what happened in the past. We can spend a lot of time talking about how bad the labor force is. We can spend a lot of time talking about how bad the economy is here locally or how good it is or whatever you think it is. My challenge to you today is to look at these programs that you're here to work with and figure out how we can make these programs better so that they're producing graduates, so that they're producing a workforce in the future that meets the demand of this region. Folks, we can do a lot of things here. But this college, this school, these programs have got to be a linchpin in our future development. If you want to change this region, if you want to make things happen, it's got to start today. And it's got to start at meetings like this where you have an opportunity to make a difference. I don't want to hear anybody leave here today and say, well, I went to the meeting and I ate some chicken. 
You've got an opportunity. They are asking for your input. Please give it. Now, I've preached enough, and that's why I said I've never been called the reasonable person, but I do want to take a few seconds here, and it is a privilege. You've got a speaker coming up today that I've known for a long time, and I have the pleasure of calling him a friend. Uh, we've had some good times. We've had some bad times. We've had some times that we've made a real difference, I think, in the state of Florida. But more importantly, I want to tell you that I think that Chris Hart is a real friend for rural Florida. And at a time where maybe we don't have as many as we need, this is somebody that's gone out of his way from time to time to make sure that things happen, not only in this region, but all across the state of Florida and rural areas. He understands what's happening to us. You know, we've had long conversations about what's happening in rural Florida versus other parts of the state, and he gets it. More importantly, Chris has gone out to his board members and made sure that they understand it and work with them so that they could help us. Chris has served as a member of the legislature. He serves currently as president and CEO of Career Source Florida. He served as the head of the governor's office of tourism, trade, and economic development. And when I say how much he likes rural Florida, you folks may not have heard this, but I'm going to pass a little bit of information along. Chris's name just got put forth to be the new uh, president of Enterprise Florida. And you are actually, outside of his board of director, the first group that he's publicly speaking to after that happened. So you get a little bit of breaking news here today. And I, I'm looking forward to hearing his words, and, and I just want to welcome to the stage Chris Hart, a great friend of, of rural Florida and of Chipola College. Thank you. Richard, thank you. Um, you know, Richard talked about the good times and the bad times, but I, I have to tell you, even the bad times were good times with Richard. But you all know Richard, and, and you know that's you know that's the case. Um, so he's he's right. You're, you're the first you're the first group that I'm having the opportunity to, to speak before um, as the news is breaking. And the only news really at this point, just so you know, is that my name is up for consideration in front of the Enterprise Florida Board and the Governor. Uh, to perhaps uh, become the president and CEO of, of Enterprise for uh, There's two other great candidates. I, I really believe that our state is going to be in, in good shape, uh, no matter who the governor or the board ends up selecting. And, um, and if it's not me, well, at Career Source Florida, we're just going to continue to partner with Enterprise Florida and Visit Florida and our uh, 28 colleges and our other partners around the state of Florida, and we're going to continue to do a good job. So. I, I know that Richard doesn't get the opportunity to brag about the Career Source Florida network that he is a part of and that he has been a leader within. Um, so I'm going to have a chance to do that. I, I just want you to understand who the partner is that, that you have in Richard. Uh, Richard and the Career Source Florida uh, network, it's part of 24 local workforce development boards throughout the state. Part of the state workforce that's us Career Source Florida and it's part of the Department of Economic Opportunity uh, with our executive director uh, Sissy Proctor I believe you all had uh, Jesse Panuccio come and speak to you uh, last year the year before so that's the the Career Source Florida network as it's sort of constructed but that's not really where the power is uh, Richard and his team Kenny's here as well um, they are part of 3,000 workforce professionals, workforce development professionals, who wake up every single day thinking about the vision and the mission and communities just like this one. So the vision that they wake up thinking about and the talk that we put down on, on the paper here, Darwin, is leading with talent. But that vision is that Florida will be the global leader for talent. So as you get together today and move beyond eating of the chicken that Richard was talking about, and you get down to talking about nursing, firefighting, and welding programs, and everything else you need to talk about, I, I think it's, it's going to be important for you to think about what will it really take for this community to be the global leader for talent. Kevin talked to us about the need that we have in the construction industry. Well, that's a real need. Now imagine if right here out of Chipola College in the surrounding community, if we were the global leader in the area of construction skill needs and development. What does that take? 
So as you're, as you're talking later today, as you're thinking through the programs that need to be developed, as you're thinking about the standards and the curriculum that Dr. Clements and all the other individuals that lead this great college are looking at as they continue to make great gains. What do you, was it number 10 on the U.S. News and World War? Congratulations, by the way, for that. So I, I saw that as I was getting ready, Dr. Clemens, and coming over here, and then I saw that you had it proudly displayed up there on your sign, too, and I thought, what, brag away. I mean, that's a great honor. Congratulations to all of you. But the reason you have that designation is because you, along with the workforce development professionals, are thinking about that vision. What does it take to be the global leader for talent in these areas? So the 3,000 individuals get up every single day and they think about that. But that's not where the real magic comes from. Richard said that you know, Debbie McMullen and Adrian Grant and myself and Richard and Kenny, I mean, we're, we're paid to think about this. We're, we're paid to do this. But we have 24 local workforce development boards, and there are about a thousand individuals just like yourselves. Community leaders, volunteer leaders, business leaders, government leaders, industry leaders that are thinking about that same vision, that same question. What does it take for us to be the global leader in any of these industry areas that we're looking to groom and to grow? That's the real magic. And there's exciting things ahead for all of us. So let me tell you about some of the, the outcomes that, that have occurred because of the good work that you, people like you, the local workforce development board professionals are doing. Let me just talk to you about some of the outcomes. Last year alone, we worked with over 80,000 businesses statewide. Think about that. 80,000 businesses throughout the state. And this local board and this partnership here with Chipola, you had a lot to do with that. You worked with a significant number of your businesses in this community. I know it's well over 10%. Think about the information that's gained. Think about the skills that, that you learn about in those conversations. Because you're talking to people like Kevin and others, people like yourselves and you're learning about the skill sets that are needed today, but even more importantly, the skill sets that are needed tomorrow. Well, that leads to the real outcome. Someone getting hired from all that information. And so last year, over nearly 400,000 Floridians who were served by those 24 local workforce development boards found jobs after working with our system. Imagine, if you will, 400,000 Floridians. Imagine what that does for their families. Imagine what that, that does to help them provide for their families. Imagine what that does to help them as they are fulfilling whatever their dreams are. Now, if you're the business that hired them, imagine what that's doing for you. Does that mean because you were able to bring forward into your organization an individual who has the right skills at the right time for your business, that you can now secure that contract that helps you succeed, that helps you to grow your business, that helps you as the business owner or business leader realize your hopes and your dreams and your aspirations? It absolutely does. So that's what Richard is a part of. That's what you all are a part of. And I think that we can do much more because of meetings just like this one. And so let me just brag a little bit about Chipola, if I could. Nine years ago yesterday, the board of directors at what was then called Workforce Florida voted to bring me into the organization as their president and CEO. It wasn't two days after that that I hopped in my car in Tallahassee and I drove over here to spend the day with Richard Williams. And I don't know if you remember that, that day the way I remember that day, but we met it at Richard's office. We got in Richard's car, actually Richard's truck, and he drove me around the community. And this is one of the first places that he brought me was right here to the college. 
because he was talking to me at that time about the partnership, the really strong partnership and the developing partnership that his board has with this college. And he wanted to impress upon me how important that was because what it means for him, his board, but what it really means for the community, for the students that are here graduating from Chipotle. For the community that relies on the students that come out of Chipotle. So he starts me at his headquarters, he drives me over here, he talks to me about the partnership, he explains to me how your community comes together around business and industry needs, around workforce development needs, and around education and the standards and the skills and the curriculum and everything that it takes to move that person to a point where they're ready to be hired. The next thing he did is he drove me around to three businesses. And the businesses went everywhere uh, from uh, what you would classify as, as agricultural all the way to life sciences. And I was absolutely amazed at what you have within this community. But you know what really struck me in that very first meeting was all of the opportunity that you have in this community. And what really struck me was what I saw in Richard and what I saw in every other person that I met with. And that's kind of a, a story that I, that I want to, I'm going to tell you a story that, that I think will help you understand what I think I saw. So I've now been doing this job for nine years. It's been a challenge. I've enjoyed it, every bit of it. But like all of us, when we're in the middle of a, of a job, there are times where you, you start to meander and wander and, and think about other places that, that you might want to be. And uh, when Governor Rick Scott was first elected, I was thinking about what that, that next thing would be. And uh, at the time, I was, I was wearing two hats. I was the president and CEO of what was then called Workforce Florida, my first choice Florida, and I was the director of the Office of Tourism, and Trade, and Economic Development. So, of course, because the, the governor had run on, you all remember what he ran on, um, 700,000 jobs in seven years, he really, really wanted to talk to the guy wearing the two hats, Economic Development and Workforce Development. So we met early on, and um, it, it, was a, it, it was a really interesting meeting, as it always is when, when you meet with a governor, but especially when you meet with a, a new governor, and he's not familiar with you, and you're not familiar with him at, at this time. He says, um, so Chris, you, you, know, you know what I ran on. Uh, what I need to see from you is a plan. How are we going to get there? Well, you know, you, 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 you can imagine when, when you get that question from, from the governor or any governor or your boss, uh, you're thinking, Holy cow. Now, but remember, I was at a place where I'm thinking, you know, I might be kind of ready to, might be ready to leave, might be ready to sort of peel on out. Well, you know, when you're thinking maybe you're going to leave, it gives you a little bit more flexibility, right? Because you're thinking to yourself, you know, gosh, maybe I don't have to implement all this stuff that I'm thinking in my mind. Well, so he asked me for this plan. I sit down and I put together a plan. And it's a doozy. I mean, it's because it's one of those where I'm thinking, this is all the stuff I always really thought we needed to do. This is, this is great for whoever it is that's going to get to implement this thing. And we're sitting in his conference room, and it's just the two of us. And he's sitting at the head, and I'm sitting a little too close, I, I thought, especially at that moment. And he's got my plan, and, you know, he reads everything. By the way. I mean, he reads every single line of everything you put in front of him. I didn't know that at the time. I'm, I certainly know it now. And I found out that day. So he asked me about the plan. And I walk him through the plan. When I'm finished, he looks at me. I can tell the question is coming. But I don't, I don't know yet what the question is going to be. But I'm assuming the question is going to be something like, so do you think we can do this? Is this possible you know, within the, the current governmental structure that we have? Would this allow us to compete? Would we really be competitive if we did what you put down here on the plan? I mean, I thought that's where he was going. I mean, that's usually a lot of the types of questions that you get. I mean, you're going to hear some of those questions later today. But that's not what Governor Rick Scott asked me. He looked at me, and remember, we're sitting really close. 
So he looks at me, he looks me right in the eye, and he says, so if we do this, we'll win? Not will we compete, not is this possible, not can we do this within the current environment or the government, but will we win? It was that day that I knew I wanted to stay and be a part of Governor Rick Scott's administration. I knew then that we were talking about something at a whole new level. I knew that the years ahead were going to be more exciting because no longer are we simply putting plans down on paper, but we're putting something down on paper that we believe we can deliver. And the objective is to win. Now let's get back to that, that, first, that first meeting with Richard when he toured me around your community and I met some of you actually in this room. That was what, that was what I got from this community. Nine years ago, when I met Richard and when I met business folks, when I came here to Chipola College, I didn't see people that wanted to compete. I saw people that wanted to win. Now, just a, a few weeks ago, David Melvin, David, thank you for the tour, by the way. It was phenomenal. I really, really enjoyed it, learned a lot. Had a chance to go on a tour recently, taking a look at the big mega site that we're talking about. And you know what I saw just several weeks ago? That that hasn't win. You're, you're even more committed to winning now than what I saw then. And, 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 it, and it's driven by, by passion, and it's driven by commitment, and you're focused. And I believe you're going to do it. So as you get together today, as, as you meet about your needs for your industry, be selfish really selfish. The Chipola College, they want to know. As they're looking at, at talking to the state level folks about what the standards need to be, as they're designing and developing the curriculum, as they're thinking through the programs, as they're thinking about the type of work experience that's necessary for those students so they can come out day one and be ready to work for your business in your industry, be selfish. Tell them about the skills that you need today. Tell them about the skills that you don't see. I mean, and that includes soft skills, right? I mean, do, do people come out, do the young ones come out and look you in the eye when they're talking? Do they show up on time? Do, do they dress the part, right? Tell them about those. But also, spend some time, and this is hard, I know, because I started a business with a friend of mine, and we didn't even know what the heck we were doing, and we were supposed to be hiring people for future needs, and at the time people were asking me, especially the HR people we were working with, to help them develop the, uh, uh, the responsibilities of the new people, and I'm thinking, I just need to sell stuff. Um, but <laughs> think about where you're headed in your industry. You know, think about the future skill needs. You know, we can look at the data. R Richard, he, he has unlimited access to all the data that we have. We, we will make every labor market statistic available to him, to you. We're open source. We'll make it available to Dr. Clemens, her team. All of that's great. But that only shows us what is, and it shows us what was. If you're selfish with this time, tell us about where you're going in the future. Please be deliberate about that. Be open about that. Because that's not anything that we can get in some of that information. We can only get it from you. And we want it, we need it desperately. So we can bring that in. We can do something with it, and we cannot compete, but we can win. So I know there's probably many questions that, that you have. Um, it, Dr. Clemens, if it's OK with you, Darwin, if it's OK with you, Richard, if it's OK with you, I, I can take some questions if anyone has any questions for me. Except from Richard. I get, I get enough questions from Richard. Okay, yeah, no, I'd, I'd be happy to. So within the Career Source Florida network, we are in the process of developing our own performance funding model. The Florida College system, they have a performance funding model. The universities have a performance funding model. 
And, and the, the idea, uh, and I do serve on something called the Higher Education Coordinating Council. It probably sounds like something you never want to go to. It's actually interesting. But as, as we've talked about these various performance funding models, and, and Richard asked me to kind of cover the, the general philosophy, the, the philosophy is this. If the performance funding models are done right, if we're looking at the key performance indicators and the metrics as we should, we're going to get better utilizing our performance funding models at delivering within the marketplace the skill sets you need when you need them. So they measure things like uh, how many placements we've had in any one of those um, uh, sectors. So coming out of our education, coming out of, of workforce. They look at the average wages. So in other words, are, are we getting this right? You know, when, when we put somebody out there uh, with a uh, certificate, uh, with an AA, with an AS, a BS, you know, something higher, something different, um, is it meeting your needs? You know, and, and we can tell a lot as, as we look at those, as we look at the wage level. Um, so the, the philosophy is that by tying, by tying dollars to the outcomes within the marketplace, it in essence, and I hate to use this word, but I'm going to use it, it forces us to work more closely between business and industry, education, economic development, and workforce development, so that we're collaborating at a whole new level of ensuring that we're giving you what you need when you need it. So if you really want to boil it down, it's ensuring that we're giving you the right skills at the right time for the right industries. Any other questions? So as I close, there's one more shout out that I'd like to give uh, to Chipola College. And, and you don't even know you did this. Um, yeah, I mean, how, how could you? We, we, and so I want to tell you, I am so enjoying being in this room. And I'll tell you why. I guess it was five years ago. It seems to me it was about five years ago. I'm the world's worst when it comes to time. We had our board meeting here. And in this room, there was a motion that was put forward by a gentleman, Dwayne Ingram, who ultimately became our chairman of our board. And it sounds like the biggest non-event, but it was huge. It completely transformed us. We had become operational. We, we were spending too much time talking about what we're doing and how we're doing it instead of why we're doing what we're doing. We were spending more time talking about federal policies and funding streams and funding models and things like that instead of looking out across the broader horizon and looking at what's happening with existing businesses, evolving businesses, and emerging businesses. We just were. We were naval gazing. So in this room, Dwayne Ingram puts forward a motion that our board, henceforth, will be a strategic board, not an operational board. And doesn't that seem almost like a silly kind of motion? Like almost like, why would you do that? But he did that, and it transformed the culture of our board, and I think the culture of our entire network. Because now, even though it's been five years, if someone starts talking about something that's more operational in nature, in other words, it's something Richard and I can just sit down and work out, or that Dr. Clemens and Richard can sit down and work out like your career center and the things that you do and how you do it, the board doesn't really need to spend a lot of time on that because what they want to know are what outcomes are you looking to achieve from that? So what, what, what's the broader purpose of it? And because of what happened in this room five years ago where we became strategic and walked away from being operational as a board, it's allowed us to get the outcomes that we are now able to deliver. And it's allowed us not simply to compete, but Florida is now in a position to win. So thank you for that. Thank you for having me out here today. I've really enjoyed it. Have a great day. Enjoy your meetings. Remember, be selfish about your needs. so much, Chris. We really appreciate that. The challenge is before us to uh, win. Um, I want to finish up today. First, I'd like to thank uh, Janice Holly. There's many people that helped with this thing, putting it together, but Janice always makes sure it goes well. Thank you to Janice.
when uh, Sherry and I got married, my wife Sherry's over here serving on Aubrey's board. We had two flower girls. And uh, during the ceremony, like, I mean, right at the good part, one of the flower girls started running across the stage to her dad and fell down and dropped her flowers and made a mess. And we thought, this is going to ruin everything. But now we look back on it and it's great. The video is still funny. She thinks it's great. Our niece thinks it's great. So I'm hoping to pull that off now because earlier I fell down when I failed to honor and recognize our law enforcement group and read right over them. So if you would, Steve Stewart and uh, law enforcement support people, I wanted to say thank you. We appreciate what you do and honor you. As you know, we're going to depart from here and go to your respective programs. Uh, do meet these challenges. Advise well. Uh, give it to us hard. Kevin, I was a little bit scared when Kevin was up here. Uh, Kevin Wall can uh, give it to you pretty straight. But he, he's right, and that's what we need. We need solid information that we can learn from and, and live by. So thank you so much, everyone, for being here, and uh, we look forward to working with you in the coming year. Uh, our economic partners, you're free to go. I'm planning on leading a tour to some of the, the groups, some of the areas as you depart and go to your respective uh, advisory meetings. I'm going to lead a tour. Anybody that would like to go with me, love to have you. Uh, so. Anything, anybody for the good of the group? Am I forgetting anything else? Dr. Clemens, Emma, Richard, any? Thank you, and uh, we're dismissed. <laughs>